This is the interior of the F-16 Fighting Falcon. On the right side is the stick with all its functions. Interestingly, it moves only a quarter of an inch. But don't be fooled by its limited motion, as it can turn this plane in any direction. Just like in this animation, if you move the stick left, the aircraft will roll to the left. This is due to the exerting force on the opposite sides of the flapperons. We will also be looking at the basic step-by-step -step process of starting a fighter jet, not to forget the process of firing an AIM-120 missile in basic format, and the raw power of this air-cooled, electrically-fired Gatling-style rotary cannon. As an unbiased channel, we have to note the pros and cons of this fighter jet, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This is the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, which is the most widely produced military aircraft ever. The F-16 grew to become one of the most popular and recognizable fighter jets in the world, with more than 4,500 produced to date. This fighter jet was designed to replace the aging F-14 Tomcat, which was an engineering marvel with its swept wing design and high maneuverability, remains one of the most famous jets used by the Navy. The F-16 was built under an unusual agreement creating a consortium between the United States and four NATO countries, Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Norway. It has a length of 14.8 meters or 49 feet 5 inches, while it has a wingspan of 9.8 meters or 32 feet 8 inches. 4.8 meters or 16 feet is the height of the jet. Let's compare this to an average human to help us understand its size. Even better, let's compare it to other fighters, the MiG-21, the famous Soviet-era flying bullet. Here are the actual size comparison between the different fighter jets, mainly the Dassault Rafale, the Eurofighter Typhoon, the F-14 Tomcat, and the MiG-29 fighter jets. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 16,875 kilograms or 37,500 pounds. For basic comparison, it's almost the weight of these 12 SUVs, considering they call this a light single-engine multi-role fighter aircraft. Inside this cone sits the ANPG Doppler radar. It sends the energy and pulses and listens for any return signal. Pulse Doppler radar is different from the standard radars as they are able to look up at high-flying targets and down at low-flying targets without being confused by ground clutter. Just behind the radar lies the forward electronic equipment bay. These are the AOA probe or angle of attack, located on both sides of the jet, also found on most modern airliners. This is the TWS antenna in full form track while scan. It is a mode of radar operation in which the radar allocates part of its power to tracking the target or targets. This is the HUD or in full form the head-up displays. Moving inside is the instrument cockpit as well as the ejection seat, which we will be examining further in the videos ahead. Just a reminder, this is the latest version F-16 Block 70 cockpit. It was a completely upgraded cockpit for a modern battlefield environment. As you can see, it looks like a bubble canopy, with pillars in the back giving it an uninterrupted view which is useful in dogfights. Just below the cockpit is this gun port, and inside it houses the monstrous M61 Vulcan. It is a hydraulically, electrically driven, six-barrel, air-cooled, electrically fired Gatling-style rotary cannon which fires rounds at an extremely high rate, typically 6,000 rounds per minute. This is how it sounds when fired. As we have always addressed, military information is always in a gray area where research and credible data are hard to come by in this oversaturated information age. We use ground news to cherry pick potential content, just like this F-16 fighter jet decision for Ukraine. As you can see, we can get around 44 sources reporting on this topic, giving us an edge to develop better well-informed videos for our audiences and the breakdown between the left center, and right institutions. Ground News gives a quick visual breakdown of the biased news distribution outlets covering their political agenda. It is also useful to know the ownership behind the news outlet, giving a better understanding of the hierarchy of information. The factuality rating helps us to pick a topic keeping it relevant and accurate. They shape our understanding of breaking news happening around the world to find common ground from different viewpoints. Ground News has really come to be a very important research tool. When making videos, I want to use the most factual and unbiased sources to make the most accurate content. Go to ground.news slash AI to stay fully informed on breaking news.
Try it out or subscribe through our link for 30% off their Vantage plan for unlimited access for as little as $5 a month. The small fin-looking object is the Takan Upper Antenna or in full form Tactical Air Navigation System. This is the IFF antenna which means identification, friend or foe. It is an electronic devices that emit an interrogating radio signal at one frequency, prompting an IFF transponder to emit a reply signal at a different frequency. Compared to the F-14, it has a single rudder. This helps the aircraft to turn left or right. And this rectangle-looking object is engineered, so that if customers wanted to add a braking parachute to stop the plane. Interestingly, these are the air brakes of the F-16 fighter jet and open up just like this. Sandwiched in between is the single-engine General Electric F-110, or Pratt and Whitney F-100 producing around 29,000 pound or 129.7 kilonewtons. Let's look at the basic process of how this works. Air is sucked from a single intake ramp and fuel is sprayed into a segment of the jet pipe, where it mixes with the exhaust gas and ignites, resulting in a second stage of combustion. In order to save jet fuel during takeoff, altitude ascent, or battle maneuvers, the afterburner is only employed in short bursts. The exhaust nozzle is made up of pedals and is designed to narrow or enlarge the distance between them as shown here in the animations. This is done to lessen the strain on the turbofan fan engines when they are in full afterburning mode. All that power is being fed by the massive number of seven to nine fuel tanks. Let us look at where they are placed. Fuel tank number one is located just behind the pilot's seat. This is the fuel tank number two, also known as center fuselage. This is fuel tank number three and four, also known as engine feed tank. Moving back, we have wing carry fuel tank numbers five and six. It can also carry around three external tanks, two on the wings and one below the fuselage. So in total, they have around nine fuel tanks, as shown here in the animations. How to start this fighter jet. This is the stick with all the buttons and functions as labeled here. But point to be noted, it moves in very little increment around a quarter of an inch as shown in the animations. Here on the left is the thruster. Just a quick reminder, this is not a proper way to start a $60 million jet, but it might get you off the ground. Step number one, turn on master. Step number two, flip on the jet fuel to start two option. Step number three, turn on RWR power. Step number four, put the artificial horizon to centered. Step number five, wait for the engine RPM to reach 20. Step number six, set the throttle to idle position as shown here in the animation. Step number seven, unlock the throttle and push forward. Maybe you might get it off the ground. As the F-16 Fighting Falcon is a multi-role fighter jet, Let's take a look at some of its weaponry and divide it into three groups. Number one, air-to-air -air missiles. It can carry air-to-air -air missiles such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder, a short-range infrared-guided air-to-air missile, and the famous AIM-120, a medium-range radar-guided air-to-air missile. Number two, air-to-surface missiles, AGM-65 Maverick. This air-to-surface missile is capable of engaging various ground targets such as tanks and other moving vehicle. Number three, guided bombs. The GBU-39 is a small diameter bomb animated in our recent videos. The F-16 jet releases a bomb and after a few seconds, it opens its wing and flies towards the target using both GPS and laser guidance to reach its destination. Now let's look at the basic process of flying this jet. Point to be noted, this is a fly-by-wire system. If we pull this stick back towards like this, it makes the aircraft pitch upwards if we push it forward and the aircraft will pitch downwards. This happens because this movement of the stick drives a movement in the tailplane, also known as the stabilizer on F-16. If you move the stick left, the aircraft will roll to the left. The flapperon or aileron moving control surface at the trailing edge of the wing on the left-hand wing will deflect upwards, and the one on the right-hand wing will deflect downwards. This means you get less lift on the left side of the wing and more lift on the right wing, hence a roll. If you move the stick right, the aircraft will roll to the right. The flapperon or aileron moving control surface at the trailing edge of the wing on the right-hand wing will deflect upwards, and the one on the left-hand wing will deflect downwards. This means you get less lift on the right side of the wing and more lift on the left wing, hence a roll. 
in the footwell and you can find the pedals. In flight, these control the rudder. Right foot forward, left foot back will cause the aircraft to yaw to the right. This happens because the rudder deflection results in total camber of the tail, so lift is generated to the right or left. Think of the tail as a wing on its side. The F-16 also uses leading edge slats. Drop down the front edge of the wing and you increase camber, so get more lift. Take it back up and you get less lift. Let's just say these are controlled automatically and work in conjunction with the flaperons. Let's look at how they fire the AIM-120 missiles. Step number one, turn on master arm. Step number two, select on air to air mode. Step number three, select AIM-120 AMRAM as the required weapon. Step number four, lock the target. Step number five, press the release button. Step number six. Aircraft will have to stay on course for around four seconds and wait until the missile goes pit bull. But lately, Nano Brevity Code no longer requires its operator to maintain a radar track. Step number seven. It can use this gun or camera laser button on this stick just below the other controls. Squeezing this trigger opens fire the M61 Vulcan, which bursts out at a high rate, typically 6,000 rounds per minute with a range of 600 meters or 2,000 feet. Here are some of its pros and cons. Pros. Multi-role capabilities. The F-16 is designed to perform various missions including air superiority, air-to-ground attacks, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. It can carry a wide range of weapons and has the ability to switch between different roles quickly. Maneuverability. The F-16 is known for its exceptional maneuverability thanks to its high thrust-to-weight ratio, advanced aerodynamics, and fly-by-wire flight control system. It can perform tight turns and high G maneuvers, making it effective in air-to-air -air combat. Avionics and sensors. The F-16 is equipped with advanced avionics and sensor systems, including a radar, electronic warfare suite, and targeting pods. These systems enhance situational awareness and provide the pilot with crucial information for effective mission execution. Global availability. The F-16 has been widely exported to numerous countries, which means that spare parts, maintenance support, and training are readily available in many regions. Now let's look at its cons. Limited range. The F-16 has a relatively limited range as it has a very low fuel capacity. Vulnerability. Due to its smaller size and limited stealth features, the F-16 may be more vulnerable to detection and engagement by advanced surface-to-air missile systems and radar-guided weapons. We make original 3D animation from scratch with honest hard work. So please support us by subscribing to help us produce more videos, just like this animation here.